What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode about the buying and selling websites on exchanges like Flippa. And uh, before I dive into everything here, I want to just say a quick thank you to everyone that's been signing up for the course that I created. As I've mentioned in past episodes, I got dozens of DMs from people about creating a course for beginners about buying and selling websites on sites like Flippa and just in general, whether you're interested in a site, you want to reach out to the owner, negotiate terms and things like that. It is a completely boiled down version of, uh, you know, what I do, the types of sites that I'm buying, the things to look for, the things to ask, all the things involved in doing diligence and deal structures and things like that. So the link to that will be in the description below. Just go ahead and use the coupon code invest 25 for 25% off. And once again, thank you so much for all of the amazing support around the course. And I'm going to be doing a lot more content around buying and selling websites because clearly that's what everybody's really interested in. A lot of subscribers on YouTube, as well as just Instagram in general, people are really interested in this space, this emerging asset class. So what I'm going to do today is go over something I like to call the personal P&L. This is a big method that a lot of mentors and advisors have told me about over the years. And I highly recommend if you are a young person that is you know, either in college or coming out of school, or you've just started a career, or you're just about to buy your own house, whatever stage you're at, if you're in 20s, 30s, 40s, whatever stage you're in, um, it's important to make sure that you have a, uh, a personal PL. And the best way to look at this is every month you have your expenses and you have your income coming in, however you're generating your income. And it's, it's good to have it all laid out. And a lot of people say that if you track every dollar, uh, you know, you're able to really budget and save money. And that is true. Once you have everything laid out in front of you, it becomes much easier to see the macro view of what's going on with your money. And once you can actually manage to control that, you, you feel much more, uh, much more in control of your own life and, and, and where you're going. So what I'm gonna do is go through high level what the personal P&L looks like for myself and other people, excluding obviously the actual amounts. I'm just entering in blanket amounts for people and myself included. These aren't actual numbers for me or uh, anyone I know. But it's important to just know that you uh, purchase an asset to cover an expense and treat yourself like a business, uh, treat your family like a business and treat income and expenses like a, a profit and loss statement every month so that you are keeping track of everything that's going on. So diving into this spreadsheet here, this is a super basic way for you guys to set it up. Anybody that's interested, sign up for the course, DM me. Uh, there's a, an email on there with the link in the description below, you can sign up and uh, you can actually reach me directly and I can send you a copy of this. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. So in all major cities, we're looking at rent, let's say around $1,500 a month or mortgage and credit card. These are going to be broken into two categories. You have your expenses, like when you're paying for Netflix or Hulu or uh, you know one of your subscription services, your gym membership, stuff like that. That'll be on credit card one. So let's say $500, then credit card uh, or credit card two, then credit card one. I classify a couple different credit cards for a couple different expenses. Many people do this differently. A lot of people would argue that it's important to just have it on one credit card. But one very important thing, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but I will say that never spend something, uh, never spend money you don't have. Never carry a balance, pay it off immediately. Always just pay for things using the credit cards to take advantage of uh, the points and the resources that are provided by using that payment method and then pay it off using debit uh, or your cash at the end of every month or the beginning of every month, however you wanna do it. And always pay off slightly more. Once again, not financial advice, but credit card number one here, let's just go ahead and say that you're using this for your uh, your gym membership and uh, groceries every month, we'll say. So we're gonna go ahead and do $1,000 a month for that. So your total burn as a person is $3,000 a month. And this is just broad sense here. You know, we're not, we're not talking about anybody in specific. We're just saying just average. Uh, so half 
of your income is going towards rent and mortgage. The other half is going towards subscriptions, groceries, and living expenses. Right here, in this category, this is my favorite category. So we're gonna go ahead and just have basic websites here that you can go on, you can find them with brokerages, you can find them with, uh, you know, flip up, you can find them wherever you wanna find them. You can reach out directly to people on the internet of services that you see that you like or content websites that you like, whatever it may be. But this is how you're gonna want to reframe your mind completely. So stick around for this. This is gonna be uh, something to pay attention to here. Every time you spend a dollar, you want to think about what asset is covering that dollar that's been spent. So outgoing money, what is the incoming money to cover that asset so or that expense? So we have here, let's say it's a content website that is completely automated and let's say it's making $800 a month and that $800 is generated from ad revenue, affiliate marketing, something like that on that website. It's automated, you're paying like $50 a month for hosting, let's say, and it gets like, you know, a half a million views a month. You would have to invest upfront, you'd have to buy that asset for an amount upfront. So for something like the uh, these different assets, we could even go with $1,000. If something's making $1,000 every month, you're gonna have to put in probably 15 to 20K. And the argument that a lot of investors and wealthy people will make is it's more intelligent to put your money to work than to have it sit in an account. So if you have 20K sitting in a bank account, would you rather have that or would you rather have $1,000 a month just uh, for the foreseeable future with minimum amounts of, of, uh, of management required? So wealthy and very, very sophisticated investors would go with the latter. They would say, I'm definitely not having my depreciating cash just sitting in a bank account making 0.01% interest. I'm gonna move it all into an asset and make, uh, you know, if it's 20K, 15K, whatever it is, put that in, make $1,000 a month. Um, gross, maybe with, depending on the asset itself, maybe you can make some, some changes in the uh, actual bottom line there. We'll just make this a little uneven just to make it look a little bit more realistic here. Um, so let's go with 900. So the, the moral of the story is you do not need to have something generating $10,000 a month at all. You can have 10 different assets that require low amounts of management or even have virtual assistants helping you manage it. And they can literally just help you, help you automate things, help you just respond to emails and whatnot. And this is how you completely cover your expenses is through these assets. And once again, you're going to get into the mindset of how can I, how can I purchase this item? I need to purchase this asset first. I need to move money into an asset that will cash flow and cover this item before I can purchase it. That's a car. That is uh, liabilities that come at you. You know, any sort of debt that you may have. Obviously, like I mentioned before, getting rid of debt first, like uh, your, your credit card debt and things like that is a fundamental part to this whole equation here. So this personal p &L here has four assets. So those are four different websites, let's say, from Flippa. They're all generating $1,000 a month. Let's say asset one is a SaaS business. Let's say asset two is a content site. Let's say asset three is um, another content site. And then let's say asset four is like a product where people actually just come to it, uh, very similar to a SaaS, but they're just using it one off. They're paying like a lifetime subscription or something like that to use a uh, course or use a, a product of some kind. So let's say that's the breakdown. And this would probably require, let's say two hours per week per asset. So let's say eight hours total. Now, eight hours a week is a less than a part-time job. And you would need, let's say for this, at $3,000 a month, we're going to go ahead and multiply this times 15. 
So this is something that uh, a lot of people get confused about. People think that in order to make $3,500 a month, you would need uh, six figures to invest in, in something to make that return. But with web properties and online businesses that are profitable and you're able to uh, you know, purchase them directly from the owners that are moving on to something else, and you're able to do your diligence using the, the tools that I've taught people in the past on this channel, even for free, is it's important to realize that this is obtainable for people. This is completely obtainable. Uh, at 50K, we can round that this is everything that you've had invested in these various different assets, in these four assets. If $50,000 isn't obtain, uh, like you don't have that sitting in an account, not many people do, you could structure a deal with each one of these people where you said, all right, um, for each one of these, I'll give you 50% upfront, 50% over the course of, uh, or 80% of the net profit of this asset for the next uh, year or two years until it's paid off. And then what you've done is you've created this way that the money flows to the seller and you as the buyer are able to actually cover your costs and that would definitely hinder these numbers for a year or two years but after that and you own them outright all that profit comes in and it gets you in the door so structuring seller financing type deals like that gets you in the door and start covering your expenses so once again guys the mindset that I'm trying to just get across, and this is something that I embody as, as best I can, and, and I try very hard to do it myself. It's, it's self-discipline in terms of money is very difficult, but once you feel in control of the, the assets that are coming in and, and the amount of money they're making, and it's, there's some consistency there, you can feel a sense of relief. Uh, and this is something I've seen across the board with students, with people that DM me, startups that I'm mentoring, all these different people, there are incredible, incredible results from people that just feel like the, the boot has been lifted off their throat every month and their assets are helping contribute to bills. And it is a, a fundamental change in how you think where you have money sitting in a savings account versus money in these assets that you've invested that are coming back over time, that's being paid back over time to cover your expenses. That is ultimate wealth. When this person here, they put 50K in, let's say across these four assets, this person is actually coming out with $450 in profit every month. Now over time, let's say 450 times 12, that's $5,400 in profit every year that this person would be able to reinvest in different assets. They could add another asset uh, that was maybe making $100 a month or something like that. But having these line items like phone bill, uh, utilities, let's say 100, let's say 250 on utilities, something like that. You can see how this is, um, let me clean this up a little bit here. You can see how this is empowering where you say, all right, to cover my bill this week, um, asset four, it only did 350 and it covered both my utilities bill and my phone bill. That frame of mind is, is super important. And this is how extremely, extremely wealthy people operate. And this is how a lot of sophisticated investors operate. And you are able to eventually snowball this into at the point where you have full control over all the assets that you have um, and the income that you're making off of these assets and you're covering your expenses and then you you have full control over over your future um, and you don't need a million dollars to be considered wealthy this is wealth when your cash flow covers your monthly expenses that is wealth uh, the million dollars sitting in a bank account that will go away uh, quickly. You gotta put the money to work. You gotta move that money into an investment, into an asset that's producing cash flow to cover your expenses and uh, make sure that you are in the clear each month. Even at this, you know, you're even at this pace, 
let's say, let's bring this all the way down to the really lower numbers here. 250. At $2,000, you're looking at this minus your cash flow. So you're looking at paying 1350. Uh, this is like as you'd be working your way up to offsetting all your expenses with assets. So this is a good example here of all of your expenses lined up, all of your assets that are lining up to so your cash flow each month from these different smaller cash flowing assets. Um, this would be much lower of a buy-in. Let's get it all the way down here. Let's do uh, this times, let's say 20. So that's at 30K. At 30K, you're making uh, 1,500 a month, let's say. And these are all broad numbers here. I'm not saying that this is what people are have to invest. There's always going to be gems out there that you know you can invest half of that and make that. There's always going to be that. But these are just broad, basic numbers, like 20X the monthly amount that an asset is worth. I'm just broadly speaking here in averages. So this is just a way to reframe how you guys think about expenses every month, your mortgage, your rent, um, your credit cards, your utilities, your phone bills, stuff like that. Once again, not financial advice, but this is the best thing that anyone has ever taught me when it came to personal finances. I, I much, I understood how, how investing worked after I started doing this. And people very much uh, agree when they look at an asset immediately, or when they look at an expense immediately, they start stressing and they think about, all right, can I afford this? Now, if you think, can my asset afford this? It almost removes you from the equation or it feels like it removes you. And I, I started doing that when I would go to like Target or whatnot with my wife and say like, all right, this uh, kitchen table, let's say, how, how long is it gonna take for my asset to cover that? Or asset number one or asset number two. How long is it gonna take for the asset to cover that expense immediately? Can it cover it this month or will it cover it over the course of three months? And your mind starts working in, in really unique ways once you reframe how you look at uh, putting money to work and putting it in assets that cover expenses and, and whatnot. So that's it for this review. Once again, thank you guys so much for the love and the course. And the link to that will be in the description below. So you guys can check that out. And I will see you guys on the next episode of the buying and selling websites. I'm gonna be doing a lot more, as I mentioned. And if you like this video, slap a like. It really helps the channel grow. It really helps people discover it. And don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you on the next one, guys.